Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to look at the Jesuit raised mystery school witch Stefani Joanne Angelina Germanata, also known professionally as Lady Gaga. She is an American singer, songwriter, and actress, and Jesuit. Born and raised in New York City, who comes from a line of powerful Freemasons. She studied at the exclusive Collaborative Arts Project 21 through New York University's Tisch School of Arts. Lady Gaga was born to Joseph and Cynthia Germanata. And now I'd like to point out Gaga's mother's father, or Gaga's maternal grandfather. His name was Paul Bissett Sr., born April 7, 1926, and died March 31, 2013. Paul was a member of St. Matthew's Episcopal Church, retired insur insurance agent for State Farm Insurance, was past president of the Wheeling Association of Life Underwriters, the Wheeling Civic Oratoria Society, the Wheeling Lions Club, the Wheeling Junior Chamber of Converse, Commerce, and then folks, listen closely to this next position, he was a member of the Osiris Temple, which is a Shriners group. He was a member of the Wheeling Lodge Number no. 5 of Free and Accepted Masons, a member of the Scottish Rite Sect of Freemasonry, and was a 33rd degree Mason. And folks, take it from me as a past Master Mason myself, this guy was pretty important and was a big time player down in Wheeling, West Virginia, sitting on many community and political bodies. And obviously this was his obituary, if you don't believe me, from Altmeyer Funeral Home. Lady Gaga's mother, Cynthia Germanata, the daughter of Freemason Paul Bissett, was born and raised in Wheeling, West Virginia. She attended West Virginia University and earned a master's degree in public administration from George Washington University and was an executive for Verizon Wireless. Now, let me tell you about George Washington University briefly from Wikipedia. George Washington University, like much of Washington, D.C., traces many of its origins back to the Freemasons. The Bible that the president of the George Washington University uses to swear an oath upon during inauguration is the Bible of Freemason George Washington. Freemasonry symbols are prominently displayed throughout the campus, including the foundation stones of many of the university buildings. Cynthia and her daughter, Lady Gaga, founded a charity called Born This Way, a nonprofit organization focused on inspiring youth, ending bullying, and building up communities. And we know all about these foundations, don't we, folks? Especially ones that supposedly help young children. She even somehow got a chance to speak to the United Nations General Assembly in 2018 on behalf of this foundation, which was only founded six years earlier. And it pays to have friends in high places, dear listeners. She is stated to be Catholic and attends Church of the Blessed Sacrament in New York City. And this, folks, is a Jesuit-founded school built by Robert J. Riley, a high-end Jesuit who attended the Jesuit College Prep School, Xavier High. And as for her father, Joe Germanata, he can only be found online via establishment sources and has no official wikis. He is stated to be an internet entrepreneur and a successful restaurateur. Based on this very limited information found online, as I've found numerous times over the years, I suspect that Joe is some sort of intelligence operative or asset and thus much of his real identity is being kept from the general public. Gaga herself attended the Jesuit school Convent of the Sacred Heart, a private all-girls Roman Catholic school. The Convent of the Sacred Heart is the sister school of the Jesuit-founded St. Regis High, of which the good Dr. Fauci attended prior to heading to the Jesuit college called Holy Cross. Gaga got her break in 2005 and pretty much ascended like a rocket to where she is now. And folks, this was predetermined. She doesn't have that much talent and let's face it, whether it's actors or musicians, these people are placed into these positions due to them being in the club or being easily controlled like through blackmail or bribes for instance. 
And to back that up, I'd like to point out with regard to acting that these people are not special. And I apologize to any thespians out there, but the fact of the matter is that we as humans act every single day and do so portraying many different roles. When you go to work at that office, let's say you play the role of that middle management employee. You wear that shirt and tie and you use those words that this employee would use. When you go home after work, you put on your father or mother hat. You play the role of parent to your children, a role completely different than the one you played at work. You're disappointed at somebody, you play the role of somebody who is pissed off. When you meet a stranger, you speak to them and you carry yourself in a different way than you do at home or around friends or family. Yes, there's some professional training, but I believe that anyone can do it, especially with a limited amount of training, as we play out different roles all day, every day. And as far as musicians go, let's not be naive there either. Is this, has anyone out there ever watched American Idol or The Voice? Watch a few episodes sometime if you can stomach it. These people all sound pretty much the same. Close your eyes and listen and you can imagine any one of those singers or musicians having their own album. And this is to say that once you get to a certain level as far as singing or playing an instrument or acting, they all seem to be at the same level, give or take. So how is it that some ascend to such stardom while others never even get their shot? By 2017, she was the headline act at the Super Bowl, and if you haven't seen it, please check it out. It was February 5th, 2017 in Houston, and it was most definitely a satanic ritual. But most of you already know all about that. Author Curtis Fogel wrote, She explores bondage and sadomasochism and highlights prevalent feminist themes. The main themes of her music videos are sex, violence, and power. Her performances have been described by supposed establishment authorities on this subject as, quote, highly entertaining and innovative. The blood-spurting performance of the Paparazzi Tour at the 2009 MTV Video Music Awards was described as eye-popping by MTV News. And folks, what is it about blood with these people? She continued the blood-soaked theme during the Monster Ball Tour. And of course, here she is as Shiva doing the Cosmic Dance of Destruction. That can also be seen as the one of the logos for CERN. She is bisexual and occasionally dresses and has performed dressed as a man and is on record expressing her fondness for androgyny. Androgyny is the morphing of a human into both man and woman showing both characteristics of male and female at the same time. Another blasphemous act that is right in line with the Luciferian religion of which she most definitely subscribes to, folks. She performed the national anthem at the disgraced Joe Biden presidential inauguration, and it wasn't her performance so much as it was her outfit and the symbolism associated with it. She wore an outfit that was similar and makeup that was identical to that worn by one of the spokespersons in the movie Hunger Games. And to go even further, she's wearing a dove pin on her left breast that you can see here is clearly the same symbol as that associated with the Hunger Games. And to make it even creepier, Joe Biden seems to parrot an exact line that was said by Donald Sutherland in that movie. And here is Sutherland. I mean, if we just wanted to intimidate the districts, why not round up 24 of them at random and execute them all at once? It'd be a lot faster. Hope. 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 It is the only thing stronger than fear. And here's what Joe said in Philly and... I believe he also said this at the inauguration speech, along with one other campaign stop, if my memory serves me correctly. We choose hope over fear. The Hunger Games is a movie about some dystopian future on Earth where the ruling class has managed to enslave the common person population and has forced them into these sectors, or you could say work camps. 
And these people are all starving and being forced to work to death in order to keep the luxuries of the world in place for the elite. Sound familiar at all to anyone out there? And finally, we can't cover Lady Gaga without speaking about her mentor, Marina Abramovich. Abramovich is the high witch that for some reason has dinner parties with the elite, but not just any dinner party. It's called spirit cooking and could be read all about in the John Podesta emails released by WikiLeaks in 2016. This is the practice of taking breast milk, menstrual discharge, and God knows what else, and cook it in order to then be ceremoniously, ritualistically consumed by the attendees. She has also hosted many quote-unquote art exhibits where attendees get to watch a mock sacrifice of a baby. The baby, or in some cases an adult, is made of food of some kind, like a cake for instance. The incredibly disturbing realistic effigy is laid upon a table and is then cut into pieces and passed around and then consumed by the attendees. Art, ladies and gentlemen, art. She has also been very suspiciously featured in a Microsoft commercial in 2020 for some reason, and I'll leave you a link in the description if you'd like to watch that. Abramovich is said to be Gaga's mentor. In fact, in an August 2013 article by NME.com, or NewsMusicAndEntertainment.com, Marina Abramovich spoke about what it was like teaching Lady Gaga her quote-unquote method after Gaga requested a one-on-one -on -one instruction from the High Witch. Abramovich told NME.com, quote, I was very impressed with how humble and incredibly determined and hardcore this kid is. She said, I want you to teach me. I want to be your student. She is a hardcore student. I had to blindfold her and she was in the forest for three hours, eaten by mosquitoes and spiders, scratched by the bushes. It was quite incredible. Whatever I told her, she met with exercise absolutely to the end, never complaining. And my exercises are pretty tough. And as you can see, here are many pictures of her quote-unquote training. Folks, I just want to tell you all that this stuff is in no way normal activity by normal people. And so finally, I'd like to say that Lady Gaga is clearly a mystery school high witch and who is most definitely doing the quote-unquote greater work. And if you don't know what that is, please take some time to watch some of the videos on this channel on Mystery Babylon, and you will know that that phrase is one of their rallying cries. I'd also like to point out one other thing that ties Gaga to the Mystery School cults and their ways of thinking. This is an article from Holloverse.com, and in this section about religion it says this. Lady Gaga was raised Catholic, but now she believes that God is one's self. She is a selfist. Now, dear listeners, this is simply just another way of sugarcoating it. It's a way of being deceptive with newspeak, changing of the words in order to make something sound benevolent. But another way to say this is that she believes, ladies and gentlemen, that she is God. And this is no surprise to many of you. Is if you understand the mystery Babylon cult, you'll know that they believe that man is God and that God is an evil and selfish God who wanted to keep mankind ignorant and unknowing of these special powers that mankind possessed. And folks, I don't care if you believe in God or the devil or in any kind of religion whatsoever fact of the matter is that these people do. They believe that Satan does indeed exist, and their religion that they practice is called Luciferianism, and it's all deadly, deadly serious stuff. If you enjoyed this presentation, please like, share, and subscribe, and please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching.